Hi again, and welcome to Lesson 7 of Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Foundations course. For today's lesson, you will learn how to build your first machine learning model using linear regression. Linear regression is one of the easiest and most popular supervised machine learning algorithms. It is a statistical method that is used to make predictions for continuous numeric variables like sales, salary, age, price, scores, and so on. Basically, a linear regression model is used to perform the task of predicting the value of one dependent variable y, also known as the target variable, based on the value of one or more independent x variables, also called as predictors. The two types of linear regression are simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. So, what's the difference? If there is only one independent variable used to predict the value of a numeric dependent variable, then it is called simple linear regression. However, if two or more independent variables are used to predict the value of a numeric dependent variable, then this is called multiple linear regression. Recall that in supervised learning, you use labeled training data as an input instead of fixed rules. And then, your machine learning algorithm will try to generalize your data by finding patterns to it, and then formulate rules on its own to reproduce the same result. Consider this example. Suppose we supply our machine learning algorithm a training data set consisting of variables x and y. And in here, one data point says that when x is 2, the output y is 7. Another data says when x is 4, the output value y is 11. And another data says when x is 1, the output y is 5. The more examples you give to your machine learning, the better it will learn. Eventually, it should figure it out and arrive to a generalized rule or a model to best replicate the given training data set. Like in this case, the trained model is simply y is equal to x times 2 plus 3. It only means that whatever the value of x, just double it and then add 3 to get the value of y. So now, if we supply new value to x to this model, value that it hasn't encountered before during its training, let's say 3, it should be able to predict accurate estimate of 9 based on its training. Now, let's have a more realistic example of this, where we can apply linear regression to build our first machine learning model. Suppose you're a real estate agent with years of experience selling houses. Since you are an expert in this field, you can instantly tell the estimated value of a house at a glance, depending on the different parameters like the lot area, total floor area, number of floors, number of bedrooms, its location, and so on. And so, to extend your real estate business, you want to have an AI system, could be a mobile app or a website, that can estimate the value of a house depending on these several factors. This could greatly help your potential clients. And to do this, first, you must have as many records as possible of all the houses that were sold for the past few months. Your record should include all important attributes like the number of bedrooms, house area in square meters, the city where the house is located, and so on. And of course, the actual price for each house. This will be your labeled training data. When you feed this data to a linear regression machine learning algorithm, it will work out how to come up with the closest possible selling price for each house. And this is what we call a machine learning model. So before we use the linear regression algorithm, first, let's create a very simple program for estimating the value of a house. Suppose I have a house with an actual selling price of 5.5 million pesos, it has 91 square meter total floor area with 4 bedrooms. Now, to create a program that estimates the value of this house, I'll create a function called estimate house value. Let's make it simple. It only accepts two parameters, the floor area in square meters and the number of bedrooms. And based on these two features, this function should be able to estimate the value of the house. So it should return a value. Now, let's say that any house, regardless of its features, would cost at least 3 million pesos. 
think of it as the baseline price. And depending on its floor area, the house value would increase. Say that for every square meter is worth 16,000 pesos. Also, in addition to this, it is reasonable to assume that the more bedrooms the house has, the higher its selling price. Say that every bedroom would cost about 250,000 pesos. Now, let's try calling this function and pass in two arguments. 91 square meters with four bedrooms. And then, I'll print the house estimated value. When I run this, our house estimated value is 5,456,000 pesos. Okay, this is quite close to the actual selling price of 5.5 million pesos. We can say that our estimator is working pretty well. Let's take a look again to what this function is doing. All it does is take each parameter as an input and then multiply them by a fixed weight. The weight for the floor area is 16,000 per square meter and the weight for bedroom is 250,000 pesos. In short, we can say that the actual value of any house is just some combination of its floor area and the number of bedrooms it has. Thus, the process of modeling the value of something with a set of fixed weights is called linear regression. But in linear regression, instead of us manually estimating and then assigning the weights like this, the algorithm will come up with the weights on its own by learning through the given training data set. So how does the algorithm know what value to use for each of these weights so that the predictions generated by this model are accurate? Well, behind the scenes, the algorithm finds these weights using some sort of an optimization technique that it can solve on its own. When we are training our machine learning algorithm, we are really asking it to find the best weights that most closely reproduce the answers in the training data set. To understand this, let's perform a calculation of our own using the sample training data, where it has only three known houses. For each house, we have the floor area, the number of bedrooms, and the actual house price. So this is the estimated house value equation for each of these three known houses. And then just substitute all the values we know from our training data. And the only unknown values in each equation are the two weights. Note that our goal is to find the two weights that work as best as possible for all this equation at the same time. So we have to start somewhere. Say, I'll start with a total random guess for each weight. I'll use 27,000 pesos for both weights. Now, let's see how well that works by evaluating each equation. Let's substitute 27,000 for weight 1 and weight 2, and then evaluate each equation to get our initial value estimate. Looking at the actual value for each house, compared to what we calculated, we can see that our estimates are somewhat off by a few thousand pesos. So now, let's quantify how bad our current estimates are. This is known as the cost function. Cost function is a function that measures the performance of a model for a given data. It quantifies the error between predicted values and expected values and presents it in a form of a single real number. There are several metrics used in regression analysis to evaluate model parameters. Let's understand some of this. First, let's compute for the error. This is the difference between our estimated price for each house and the actual price for that house. Now, you might see negative or positive error or distance depending on whether the predicted value is higher or lower than the actual value. Now, we need to get the summation of these errors. But it is not correct to say that distance can have negative value. This value should not be negative as it will cancel out positive errors when we sum it up. So a simple approach is to get the absolute value for these errors. And then to compute for the cost, let's sum up all the absolute errors and divide it by the number of data points. 
and we only have three houses. So, it gives us a computed cost of 72,000. This cost function that we just created is called mean absolute error or MAE. This regression metric measures the average magnitude of errors in a group of predictions without considering their directions. In other words, it is a mean of absolute differences among predictions and expected results where all individual deviations have even importance. In layman's term, our prediction is a bit off by about 72,000 pesos from the actual selling price. Now, another commonly used regression metric is the mean squared error, or MSE. This is an alteration of MAE where instead of taking the absolute value of differences, they are squared. Now, let's square each of these items and then add them all up. We square the error for each house to penalize large error more. We'd rather have each house's estimate a little bit wrong than have one house to be really wrong. Finally, let's divide the summation by the number of houses in our data set. And we only have three houses, so we'll divide it by three. And it gives us an average squared error for a single house in the data set. Similar to MAE, it tells us how wrong we are with the current weights. In other words, the total cost of the current model. Our goal is to find the weights that minimize the cost for all houses in our data set. If we can make the cost equal to zero, then our prediction algorithm is perfect for every single house. The higher the value of the cost function, the more wrong our predictions will be. We can try another value for these weights and compute the cost function again and again until we can no longer minimize it. Note that if you have a huge data set, doing this manually is a tedious process as it requires plenty of iterations. This is where gradient descent algorithm comes in useful. We can use gradient descent to find the minimized value automatically without trying a bunch of hypotheses one by one. So basically, Using the concept of cost function in conjunction with gradient descent is the one we commonly know as linear regression. So now, to understand linear regression, I'll create a new notebook. And as usual, I'll import these three basic packages, NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. And now, to import linear regression, I'll say from sklearn.linear model. Okay, let's start with simple linear regression. I have created a synthetic data for this example, is stored in a separate CSV file. So I'll call the pandas read CSV function to open the file. Here, you can see a very small data set consisting of only 10 rows with two columns, the house area in square meters, and its price in million pesos. So what we want is to create a simple model that can predict the price of the house based only on one predictor, the house area in square meters. And to do this, I need to get a subset of this data frame using the ILAC function. I'll get all the rows of this first column now, you must know that when we use linear regression under scikit-learn, there is a function called fit that expects x and y parameters. This expects an array value instead of a pandas series or a data frame. So what I need is a bare numpy array. Another thing, for the independent variable x, regardless of whether it is just a single column or multiple columns, it must be represented as a matrix or a two-dimensional array. So I'll call the reshape function and pass in negative 1 and 1. This creates a two-dimensional array consisting of 10 rows with only one column. Similarly, I'll create our dependent variable y consisting of all rows from the price column and then get a single-dimension numpy array. So to begin, we usually express our data with a simple scatterplot. I'll call this house price by size. 
And on the x-axis is our independent variable, house area in square meters. And on the y-axis is our dependent variable, selling price in million pesos. Now, you see our 10 data points is sprinkled onto our graph. The goal of regression is to help us find a line that will best fit our data points. Obviously, we aren't going to have a single line that can hit every one of these data points. However, if we only have two data points, then plotting a line is very easy. You've learned the technique in your middle school. The formula of a line in slope-intercept form is y is equal to mx plus b, where the variable b represents the y-intercept. This is the point where the line crosses the origin on the y-intercept. This happens when x is 0. Then, we have variable m. This represents the slope of our line. It tells us how steep our line is. A positive slope, meaning that the line is rising from left to right. A negative slope tells us that our line is falling from left to right. If the slope is 0, this means that our line is flat horizontally. So for example, let's say that the slope m is 1.5 and y-intercept b is 3. Now, to get the value of y when x is 1, let's substitute these values to our equation and it gives us the value of y is equal to 4.5. That means our line looks like this. But now, when we have multiple data points scattered like this, figuring out how to draw the line that passes as close as possible to all of the data points is a key challenge. So, basically, regression analysis tries to find that formula for the line that will best fit this distribution. In linear regression, we find a line that goes through the data points in a way that captures the overall trend. Now, if we are to do this manually, we need to compute for the slope and the y-intercept for these given data points. Also, in statistics, we're going to be using y is equal to ax plus b instead of mx plus b. They mean the same thing. I just replace variable m with a as our slope. Okay, here is our data set. So, we need to get the product of x and y, and then the square of x, and then the square of y. Now, we add up all the columns. To get the slope a, we use this formula. Okay, don't be overwhelmed by this. It is simpler than you think. Let's plug in all the values from our table to this formula. We have 10 houses multiplied by the summation of x, y minus the product of summation of x and summation of y. Then, divide it by 10 houses multiplied by summation of x squared minus the summation of x squared. So, the computed slope is 0 0.0454426. It only means that for every square meter increase in the size of the house, the price is expected to increase by 0 0.0454426. 4426 million pesos. Now, let's compute for our y-intercept. So, we use this formula. Summation of y minus the slope. This is the one we've recently computed, multiplied by the summation of x, and then divided by the total number of houses, which is 10. This gives us 1.3455825. It only means that, based on this given data set, any house would cost at least 1.3455825 million pesos, even if it has an area x of 0 square meter. Okay, that's a lot of computation for a very small data set. That's why, when working with machine learning model, where you are expected to have a huge amount of data to process, you need a good machine learning library that you can use to perform all these calculations as fast as possible. In Python, one of the commonly used machine learning library is scikit-learn. This library is like a Swiss army knife, packed with different machine learning algorithms readily available. So inside this, we'll use the linear regression. 
I'll create an instance of this class and reference it with the local variable LR. Now, with just one line of code, I'll call the fit function and pass in two arguments, x and y, our predictor and the target variable. And that's it. Everything has been computed for us. We have a linear regression model for this dataset. If you want to get the y-intercept, just say model.intercept. And it gives us 1.3455825, exactly the same with the ones we've computed manually. Also, to get the slope, we say model.coef, and this gives us the same value for a regression coefficient of 0 0.0454426. So, if we have this formula, y is equal to ax plus b, where a is the regression coefficient and b is the y-intercept, we can use this equation to predict y for any given value of x. First, let's see again our data, x and y. And so, to predict, I'll use this formula, y pred equals the coefficient multiplied by say 75 square meters, plus the y-intercept, and we got a predicted value of 4.75 million pesos. This is quite close to the actual value of 4.35. Slightly higher though. Now let's test another one for the 90 square meter house, and this gives us an estimated price of 5.435 million pesos. Also close, but a bit lower than the actual value of 5.76. In fact, we can use the entire array of x and Python will do the parallel computation for us for each value of x. This gives us an array of the predicted values of y, a two-dimensional array with 10 rows and one column. Of course, there is a much simpler version of this. You can call the predict function and pass in an array and it will give us exactly the same values as we have earlier. The main difference is that the predict function returns a single dimension array. With this predict function, you can also pass in a single value, but still in a matrix format, say 75 square meters, and the same predicted value of y is returned. I'll test another one. This time, I'll pass in a value that doesn't exist in our original dataset, say 80 square meters, and the estimated price is 4.98 million pesos. So now, the biggest question is, how good is our model in predicting the house price? With this, I'll be introducing a new concept, the coefficient of determination, also called as R squared. And of course, there is a statistical formula to get the value of r squared for a linear regression model. But to simplify things, it is already provided to us with just a single function call. The score function, once called, returns the coefficient of determination. It expects two parameters as well, the same parameter you would pass using the fit function, the predictor x and the target variable y. So, this gives us a score of 0 0.922135. This R-squared value is a measure that assesses the ability of a model to predict or explain an outcome in the linear regression. A value that is close to 1.0 indicates that the regression line is a good fit for our data points. R-squared of 0 0.922135. So, what actually does that mean? In our case, we can say that 92.2% of the variation in house selling price is explained by its area in square meters, while the other 7.8% of the variation can be attributed to error. So now, this R squared is represented by capital letter R, the coefficient of determination. And in the world of regression, there is another R represented by small letter R the correlation coefficient. This is the one that you've seen in the previous lesson, Python data analysis. So what's the relationship? The correlation coefficient, denoted by small letter r, is simply the square root of r squared. 
but the sine of our correlation coefficient is the same as the slope of our regression line. In our sample data points, we know that our slope is positive, 0 0.04554426, so our correlation coefficient would be positive as well. Then, we take the square root of r squared, 0 0.922135, and this gives us a correlation coefficient of positive 0.960278. Well, you can easily get this value using the core function of your pandas data frame, as you've seen in the previous lesson. Recall that this value could range from negative 1 to positive 1. So, while r, the correlation coefficient, does not provide specific information about the regression line, but it does tell us the tightness of fit of our data points, including the upward or downward trend of the data from left to right on our axis. Okay, let me show the scatter plot of our data points again. You can also use the plot function instead of the scatter function. This gives us the same result. I just changed the color of our data points to green. Now, to add a trend line or regression line, I'll insert this code, plot a straight line between the house area and the predicted value of y. I'll set the line color to orange. And as you can see, our predicted values, represented by this regression line, don't hit all the actual data points, as they are scattered but this line tries to be as close as possible to all of our data points. When working with supervised learning like this linear regression, there is a common practice on how we should train and measure the accuracy of our model. Usually, since we will be dealing with large data set, a common approach is to split your data into training and test data set. In this way, your model will learn from a certain portion of your data, typically about 70 to 80% of it, and then you can test the trained model to another set of data that it has not seen before, the remaining 20 to 30%. The same approach on how you would train a student in a class, by giving a student lots and lots of examples, and then, during the test, a different set of questions should be given. This is how you measure the student's accuracy if the student truly learns. Otherwise, if you'll just give the exact same example during the test, it wouldn't much be of a test because the student could get a score of 100 by simply memorizing the training data. So to do this, I'll import the train test split from sklearn.model selection. And then, I'll create four variables in this arrangement, xtrain, X test, Y train, and Y test. Then we call the train test split and pass in our data set X and Y. And then the test size parameter, I'll give it 30%, which means the other 70% will be allotted as the training data. I'll also set the random state, and you can set it to any number. So why do we need this? First, we need to randomize our data set, so it is not in any predefined order when we split our training and test data. But then, since this is a tutorial, you might want to get the same random data set that I have here when you test it yourself, so you can replicate what I'm doing. As long as you use the same random state number, you will be getting the same random data set. Okay. So let's see our original dataset consisting of only 10 items. And then I'll print my X train and Y train dataset. So you see only 7 randomized items, that's 70%. And then I'll print the X test and Y test, the 30% test data. Now let's do a scatter plot of our training data. and also the scatter plot of our test data. And then, I'll call the fit function to train our model using our training dataset. And let's see the score, how good our model is. 
the score is 91.3%. Well, that's good. Now, I'll create another variable called ytrainpred to store all the predicted values using our training data. I'll check both the predicted and the actual values of y for just a quick comparison. And then, to see it in a graph, which is a lot easier to look at, I'll call the plot function. Note that this is only the training data. So now, what we really want to know is how good it can predict using the data it has not seen before, using our test data. I'll create another variable, ytestpred, and then predict using the x test data. I'll display both the predicted and the actual house price. The values are quite close. So let's see the score. And we only got 86.5%, a bit lower than the training data. Of course, this is a very small sample size. Also, you might notice a slight variation of this score when you change the random state value on your end, as it would give different data set for your training data and test data. Try it yourself. So now, we know how good our value prediction through this R squared, the coefficient of determination. However, if we want to know how wrong we are in predicting the house price, we can use one of the metrics that we discussed earlier, the mean absolute error. Don't worry, we don't need to compute manually. All we have to do is import this mean absolute error from sklearn.metrics, and then let's ask the mean absolute error for both our training data and our test data. And as simple as that, in our training data, we are off by about 0.25 million or 250,000 pesos with our prediction. And for our test data, we are wrong by about 380,000 pesos. Of course, if we can zero in these errors, it means that our prediction is 100% accurate. Let's check the scatter plot of our test data showing the regression line. And visually, you can instantly see that the regression line that was generated by our model could have been better. So, we were able to perform simple linear regression, where we only have one predictor that affects our target variable. What if we have other variables in our dataset that we can use to predict the selling price of our house? Then, we need to use multiple linear regression. I have another CSV file here where I only included one additional column, the number of bedrooms. Also, the data size is 20 instead of 10. So I'll use the two features, the house area and the number of bedrooms, but then we need to convert this data frame as a bare 2D NumPy array. Similarly, I'll get the selling price as the target variable. Usually, if you have multiple variables in play, you would want to do a scatter plot for each pair. There is an easy way to do this. You can import the Seaborn package as SB and then call the Seaborn's pair plot function and pass in your data frame. You'll see a matrix of plot between variables, like the price by area and square meters or the price by number of bedrooms. And now, Let's check the correlation coefficient of these variables using the core function. This dataset shows that both predictors are positively correlated to our target variable. We can also visualize this correlation coefficient in a matrix as a heat map. I can call the Seaborn's heat map function and pass in some arguments. For the first parameter, I want to view the correlation of this data frame, and then the annotation is set to true for us to see the actual values together with the map. 
the minimum value and then the maximum value for the correlation coefficient ranges from negative 1 to positive 1. Also, I want it centered and set the map color to green. This heat map is the same as the above table of correlation coefficient. Now, same as before, we need to split our data to training and test dataset using the train test split function. Okay, let's see the randomized values for our X train, X test, Y train, and Y test. So, to train our linear regression model, I'll simply call the fit function. You may or may not assign the return value of this to another variable. Either way, it is okay. And then, I'll predict using the training dataset and see the score how good our model is. The score is 85%. Well, not bad, but it could be better if we have more data set. Now, let's use this model using our test data. And then, let's see the predictive accuracy. And we have a slightly higher score of 87%. Now, if 87% accuracy is good enough for us, depending on our business policy, then we can use this model to predict the value of any house by simply supplying a combination of these predictors. Let's say a 100 square meter house with 5 bedrooms would have an estimated value of 5.68 million pesos. Let's try another. A 70 square meter house with 3 bedrooms This would cost about 4.5 million pesos. And then, let's check the mean absolute error so that we have an idea how wrong our guesses are. Okay, we are off by about 320,000 pesos. And that's it. Congratulations, you were able to build your first machine learning model. So far, You've learned how to make predictions for continuous numeric data using simple and multiple linear regression. Take note that this is the simplest algorithm to begin your journey in the world of machine learning and artificial intelligence. There are other regression algorithms that can produce a more accurate result as compared to linear regression when predicting continuous numeric data. So, please study this lesson since the knowledge that you will gain from this topic is very important in the succeeding lessons. Again, thank you very much for watching, and if you learned something of value here, please click the like and subscribe button for more programming tutorials. This is Joe Edgo, and hope to see you again in the next lesson.